Ah. Oh. Hello? Ryan, it's Heather. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Where It Was Made. I am your host, Ryan Coltrera, and I am here with one of the quintessential final girls of horror, Heather Langenkamp, who plays Nancy Thompson in the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Heather, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. It's nice to be here. Now, uh, the Elm Street films are about to turn 32 years old. What do you think it is about these films that continues to resonate with people? And what is it about your character that sticks with people? I had a lot of time to think about this, mm -hmm. and 32 years is a really long time. Um, I think that Nancy is a really good example of someone who faces her fear, and the whole um, the whole premise of the movie kind of gives you a strategy for how to do it in your own life and I just meet so many fans who say that beyond just being a really great scary movie that it has this like extra dimension and and I believe that um, it's made it a little bit more of a hefty you mm -hmm. know heavyweight over time. Okay great. Um, now myself I am a horror movie director so obviously Wes Craven was one of my biggest influences. <laughs> uh, could we talk about kind of your experience with him, uh, your initial meeting and what it was like to be on set with him? Well Wes Craven you know did not look like uh, a horror director neither do you by the way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there is no look I don't I don't think so Fair but um, you know he uh, we met and he's just a very pleasant person very quiet and easy to get along with. He he didn't, you know, make a lot of demands on me, which mm -hmm. I, I always was very grateful for, and, and yet he always seemed to always have that great idea if you were stumped for, like, some mm. a, a way to be, or, or you know, sometimes these, uh, these plots are just kind of hard to understand, or right. where am I supposed to be, you know, am I hysterical, or am mm -hmm. I moderately afraid, and... And he always had such a uh, great, he was always keeping track of where my character was emotionally in the movie. Because you can't have everything, pay, um, you can't have everything played at a fever pitch. Mm. You have to have a lot of ups and downs. You have to have a lot of quiet moments and a lot of sure. fast moments, a lot of funny moments, a lot of scary moments. And he just always seemed to be able to orchestrate it beautifully. Great. Now, what scares you? Were there any fears that you dwelled on that affected your performance? No, I, I, I never actually like uh, have been afraid of anything mm -hmm. in particular, and I feel like fear, you know, you can't really portray fear in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. Fear is the kind of emotion that actually kind of just makes you stop in your tracks and you don't do anything, and I think that's one of the things that Nancy really um, she exhibited is that she's. She always had action to take, and it mm -hmm. was never about being afraid. It was always about figuring it out. And so I always um, pursued it with curiosity, with the sense of, like, what what is going on? Mm -hmm. Those were always my motivators, never, like, what is it? I'm so scared, you know? Okay, that makes sense. Um, now, kind of hopping around a little bit here, um, have you been back to revisit any of the locations since filming? You know, I drive by a lot of them just in my daily life in Los right. Angeles, and, and it always brings back a lot of memories. Um, I have been back to the house a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that it's like a real, like a really, pro you know, popular stop oh, sure. nowadays for horror fans. So I feel really sorry for the people <laughs> on that house. Um, but no, I don't make a habit of going to the places on purpose. Okay, that that makes <laughs> sense. I guess can you take us through uh, your casting in this film and kind of how you got involved in the Nightmare on Elm Street films, your audition process? I was living in Los Angeles and. Um, my agent would call me, you know, every week or every other day with an audition, mm -hmm. and this was just one of, of many that I was attending at that time of my life. Great. It was a busy time in Hollywood for young people, but they were doing a lot of movies about teenagers. Mm. So, this was one uh, that I remember because it was so low budget. I mean, even the even television that wasn't you know extravagant, you sure. would have an office with desks and usually there would be someone to sign you in and you would have mm -hmm. like you know <laughs> furniture in the room but the Nightmare on Elm Street casting office was a little rented office in Hollywood and there mm -hmm. was not a stitch of furniture it was just one desk that the casting director <laughs> sat at and we all sat on the floor it was 
obviously a really low budget affair from the very beginning. Sure. Now as an actress, uh, who are your inspirations both for this role and in general? Well, I mean, I grew up not, I, I didn't watch a lot of television growing up. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I grew up in the generation where you had some favorite shows like Little House on the Prairie and sure. The Waltons. I mean, seriously, probably Little House on the Prairie was like my favorite show. <laughs> um, so those were filled with great, you know, young girl characters. Right. And um, same with a lot of the shows that I watched. I don't think I ever said I'm going to be like her in my acting, but, um, you know, I really felt strongly that Wes Craven was hiring me because he really liked me. Mm. And, and he really liked the way I did things. So, in general, I always try to stay away from trying to think of anybody else's kind of performance and just think about what I would do as Heather. Okay. Um, now, were there any moments in the film, or I guess, were you allowed to improvise in your character, or did you guys stick very heavily to the script? Well, the script, I always feel you have to stay to the letter of the script. I mean, especially since Wes wrote it, and mm -hmm. I really felt like it would have been an insult to him if I tried to put my own words into those places. Okay. Um, once in a while, if you have a very long scene, of course, you might wander a little bit, but in general, I try to um, stick you know, to the script 100%. Great. Though in the bathtub, that was one scene where I actually did mention to Wes that I needed to make something up for that song that I was going to sing, mm -hmm. um, or the little rhyme. It, it, and as written, it was a rhyme. And then right. I told him that I said I'd really like to sing it just like you would, um, you know, a nursery rhyme. Mm. And so um, my boyfriend at the time and I came up with that tune that I sing. And so that That's was great. like one of the best improv uh you know improv moments that nancy has i think yeah and that's like lives in infamy now <laughs> i mean also too like uh, in any scene with fighting that was all you know robert and i putting together these fights together mm -hmm. working that out that's a kind of improvisation and um and then the fight scene with marge not fight scene but when you know she slaps me mm -hmm. like those kinds of really energetic kind of emotional scenes i always find like there's a lot going on that the actors figure out by themselves, mm -hmm. you know, before the camera rolls. Okay. And actually, speaking of that fight, um, just to clear up a couple internet rumors about the film, was that slap real? Yes, it was. Okay. That's, there seems to be some debate well, on mean, that. Well, I mean, we did like a hundred of them, so not all of them <laughs> were real, but there was one that was accidentally real. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, and actually, while we're at it, to clear up a couple more things, um, one of the things that people seem very unclear about on the internet, what are the stairs made of? So the stairs were just, you know, they were on the stage that we worked on over on Coenga Avenue. Mm -hmm. And they were regular stairs at first, and then for that scene, they cut away the, the step, and they just laid a uh, piece of carpet. And inside the carpet was like a mixture, I'd probably say, of like oatmeal and like a very goopy kind of oatmeal kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. so it is oatmeal. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was oatmeal. Okay, we'll go with that. Um, and that actually transitions to my next question, which you obviously are now wearing a lot of hats. We're here in your effects studio. Uh, you're a producer now. And actually, on a, a personal note, um, my very first uh, film I created and my first film festival screening was the lead-in for I Am Nancy. Oh, my God. So I kind of have great. a bit of a personal thing oh, here. That, that, well, congratulations. So it's, That's It's a awesome. very special thing for me. Um, but that leads to what are you up to these days? Well, we're really busy here at our makeup effects studio. Mm -hmm. We've just finished the last installment of American Horror Story, right. um, My Roanoke Nightmare. Mm -hmm. So that was 10 episodes of like really terrifying, great makeup effects. Right. And then, you know, we've worked on some things throughout the year. We, we worked on some makeup effects for Ang Lee's latest film, which oh, is um, Billy Lynn's Long halftime walk mm -hmm. so there's a few makeup effects in there that we um, helped Louisa Abel who is the makeup artist on that film make for that and then we do you know we do gosh I mean so many things little things here and there for a lot of different people great all right and for my last question to bring it back oh and to we did the green oh. meanie mask yeah oh which, cool you know, Green Meanie for the new um, season of Scream Queens, which Great. really took a, you know, it's, it's a long process getting a design, you know, through that process sure. at a studio. So uh, we all... Uh, we all really enjoy that kind of work as well. And you guys are doing great stuff. Just looking around here, it's really impressive. Oh, thank you. Uh, and just to bring it back around to locations for the very last question, 
Uh, if you had to pick a favorite place from the movie, a place that kind of stuck with you the most, mm. what location sticks out to you? What does it have to be from Nightmare, the first Nightmare? No, whatever one you prefer. Um, well, I have to say, I, I have a fondness for all of the um, cemeteries that we've shot in. Mm. I think cemeteries are really beautiful places it, overall. I enjoyed a lot shooting at UCLA for mm -hmm. Nightmare 3, where um, we're up in this kind of a bell tower, and um, I meet Nan Martin, who is the nun, right. the, the Freddy's mother. Mm -hmm. That was a really bizarre um, experience, and um, the, you know, it was... It was scary. It was a definitely a really, mm. really scary place. So it's always fun when you can film in a really scary place for yeah. a horror movie. Really adds to it, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, it does. So here you have the bridge scene. Glenn, Johnny Depp, and I walking over the bridge in Venice, California. But, you know, the location of the film is... Uh, not supposed to be California. So I think this was actually probably one of those Hollywood mistakes. I do not think they did that on purpose. Um, for that scene, it would have been very complicated to set up the close-up on that. So we did that on the soundstage on Cahuenga, and we set it up on the rooftop. We, um, they put some vegetation behind us, I think, and set the camera up. But you see us against the blue sky, because we're basically standing on a roof in Hollywood. And uh, as I remember, that day was the day that Sean Cunningham was directing on the, on the show. So I was going from the rooftop down below where I was like running through the alleyway. Uh, and that's the day I cut my foot and um, on the set. But so that scene up on the roof, which is really such an important part of the movie, was not shot in Venice. All right, so the boiler room was shot actually in many different places. There's a lot of aspects to the boiler room, but in the scene where I'm running from Freddy, we, sh we shot that scene at the uh, Lincoln Heights Jail, which is a very popular location for Wes Craven horror movies. And I know that they've shot scenes from Shocker in there and other Wes Craven films. So that uh, setup was finding a place that had lots of pipes and lots of things that looked steamy and dangerous. And I just basically ran down one catwalk from different angles and they moved the camera here and there. It wasn't a very large space that we shot in. And, um, and then you see me kind of like shimmying in between some big boilers. I'm pretty sure that was the Boil Heights Jail. And, uh, that was a very scary place because it had held prisoners for many, many years and then been closed down because it was actually kind of an inhumane place for the prisoners. So the house on Genesee, which is the house on Elm Street, is an iconic place now, obviously, and thousands of people visit it every year. For me, my favorite part of that house was setting the booby traps first of all, was something that I really enjoyed doing, uh, especially in the living room. We shot a lot of work there, but it interplayed with work on the set, so it, to me it's kind of this one seamless place, but for sure the bedroom was my favorite place to sit in when we were shooting, because Greg Fonseca, who was our art director, he had decorated my room so beautifully for a girl my age in the film, who's 15, 16 years old, if you looked around and you look in the background, you see so many details for a young girl that just made sense. And it, it doesn't look new. It's very shabby. There's a lot of kind of junk that the girls collect. If you're a girl, you know what I mean. It's just kind of sitting in the corner. And Greg had a perfect understanding of that. And as a result, every time I was there, I just felt like, oh, this is definitely my room. And uh, looking out to see Johnny Depp's house, Glenn's house, was a magical um, a thing. It's so rare in film to have something that you can really focus on that's real. And, you know, Johnny did come through the window and, um, and sit on that chair. And so there's something very real and, and wonderful about that particular room for me. So that house, we did a lot of exteriors of our nightmare house. But there were a few interiors that we did. One, when I'm 
like looking out across at Glenn's house when my dad and everyone are on the street after he's been murdered. And I'm like, Dad, Dad, get my dad, you asshole. <laughs> that one, everyone's favorite line. And then um, a lot of the scenes outside when um, I'm searching for Freddy and like I'm jumping into the rose bushes and I'm like wake, you know, walking very stealthily down Elm Street. That was something that I really enjoyed doing because we used a handheld camera and that was something very new in Hollywood to have a um, kind of a gimbal person, you know, with a camera off dolly tracks, off sticks, doing these, um, you know, following shots. And so it was kind of high tech for the time and um, I had to walk really slowly and run really slowly so the person could keep up with me. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for being here. Welcome. Great.